So, last time we discussed uh, phase modulator which is uh, made with uh, uh, electro optic uh, material and this electro optic material the peculiar property of the electro optic material is that if I apply an electric field uh, I can apply an electric field by applying a voltage uh, the phase experience the refractive index of that material changes and when the refractive index changes the phase changes and so I can modulate the phase at the input and we wrote down this equation uh, last time we said that if I have a uh, input uh, which is represented by E in my output is input times e power j phi t where phi t is the phase that is uh, introduced by the application of field. I call it phi of t because uh, I can apply a uh, AC voltage and maybe this can be grounded I can apply a V of t and I can change the phase. Okay. I am not considering the static phase that may have accumulated because it is propagated through distance. Now, typically these electro optic modulators are few centimeters long, 3 or 4 centimeters long and they come in a packaged version and the light is actually guided through the uh, waveguide. We discussed this waveguide and how an electric field can influence this light and so on through this electro optic effect. Now, there are uh, more details of this device as to uh, which electro optic coefficient is most effective for which polarization and so on. We are not getting into the details like I said last time we are only talking about the system level description of the electro optic modulator. So, we have made a phase modulator and uh, we have to remember that V pi is the voltage that is required to produce a phase change of uh, pi. And once you make the modulator and that is that V pi is decided by how big is your uh, waveguide, what is the interaction cross section between the electric field and your optical field and so on and of course, the electro optic coefficient and so on. So, in the system perspective what we can do is we get a modulator and we can measure the V pi right that is a characteristic uh, that is uh, available in the data sheet of the instrument. I will say V pi I will get a V pi. Now, the question is how do you make uh, intensity modulation because you know uh, the most common uh, uh, modulation scheme that has been used in optical communication is not phase modulation it is on off keying we wanted to do intensity modulation and we cannot use direct modulation of lasers for the reasons that we have discussed. So, how do you do intensity modulation? So, what you basically do is you convert phase modulation into intensity modulation ok. So, you make sure that you make an arrangement such that a phase change is converted into an intensity change and which is that basic arrangement in optics where a phase change can be converted to an intensity change? It is a interferometer ok. So, what you do to ma ma make an intensity modulator is to build an interferometer. Now, this interferometer is not something that you have to do externally with uh, you know discrete optical elements. You can build the interferometer even in the waveguide. So, what you do is you take the waveguide. So, what is marked here is the waveguide and then you create a splitter. So, the light gets uh, you make a 50 50 splitter it splits into two halves propagates through a certain element which is exposed to electric field right. So, this red is electrode and then this wave uh, the two waves the split. So, you have light going in it gets split into the two arms of the interferometer and in this portion where I am marking right now where you see the red electrodes there is a phase change let us say the top arm gets a phase change of phi 1 and the bottom arm gets a phase change of phi 2 and these fields are now combined and then you get your output field. So, depending on what your phase changes are your output intensity will now be a function of your uh, phase change. We will derive how that can be achieved, but this is a basic construction. If you look at the cross section if you take a cross section here at this point let us say I take a section of this waveguide how is that going to look like I will have two waveguides right because these are the two waveguides I will have and then surrounding the two waveguides I will have the electrode here an electrode here and an electrode here. So, I will I can have an electric field like this I can have an electric field like this 
I can choose not to apply an electric field uh, here. So, let us say call, call this as uh, uh, V1 and call it as V2. I can apply either voltage only at V1 or I can apply voltage at V1 and V2. I can apply voltages which are opposite V1 is minus V2 and so on, right. I have the freedom to do that, okay. So, I have, so how many pins will this uh, modulator have? It will have uh, an optical input, it will have an optical output and it will have an RF input which is your uh, where through which you apply your voltage. So, what we are going to do next is going to we are going to work out what is the output of this uh, modulator, the transfer function of this modulator, okay. So, the way we are going to write this is you say E out is equal to E in by 2, it got split. In the first arm, you have E power j phi 1, there is a phase difference phi 1. In the second arm, E power j phi 2. I am looking at the phase introduced only because of the voltage phi 1 and phi 2, uh, v1 and v2. There is a phi 1 and phi 2. There could be some residual phase difference. I am, I am assuming that all that residual phase difference is 0 right now, okay. Now, uh, it, it got split and it got combined and this is the phase experienced by uh, first arm. This is the phase, ex phase, phase experienced. Uh, if phi 1 is the phase experienced in the top arm, and phi 2 is a phase experienced in the bottom arm. Now, let us simplify this. I am going to do uh, uh, e power minus uh, e power j, I take phi 1 plus phi 2 by 2 out, okay. So, that I can write this as e power j phi 1 by 2 e power minus j phi 2 by 2 objective is to write the output in terms of the phase difference between the two arms. So, plus e power I already have a j phi 2. So, I will need a j phi 2 by 2 and I did not have a j phi 1 by 2. So, I will have to do a minus j phi 1 by 2, okay. So, this is E n by 2 and I will say this is something like a, a common mode phase phi 1 plus phi 2 by 2. Okay, where I say phi C m is equal to phi 1 plus phi 2 by 2 or an average phase if you may want to call that as an average phase. But here inside the brackets I have j phi 1 minus phi 2 by 2 plus e power j minus j phi 1 minus phi 2 by 2. Basically, I wrote my e out as equal to e in e power j phi common phase and cos of delta phi by 2. And remember this delta phi is phi 1 minus phi 2 divided by 2. Uh, how do I now find the power output? Because we are doing intensity variation. So, we are not interested in field variation, we are interested in intensity variation. So, what would be p out? Now, this assumes that there is no loss in the modulator, right. Uh, whatever input power I am giving, I am getting the same output power, but there could be some loss in the system, right. I am not accounting for that. So, power will be mod square of this. So, this would be P n times and this is why I said E power j phi common mode will not have any relevance as far as the power is concerned because E out, E out star, there is no uh, contribution from this but you will have cos square delta phi divided by 2. Okay. So, P out by P in is what I call as the transfer function of the modulator that is going to be cos square delta phi divided by 2. Now, let us say for example, my phi 2 is 0. I am not applying phase in the bottom arm. I have phase applied only in the top arm, okay. Then my P out by P in, I mean this expression does not change. It just says that it is cos square delta phi by 2. Now, you sketch the transfer function with, resp with respect to delta phi. So, how would the power transfer function look like? I will have delta phi and this is P out divided by P in. 
uh, when delta phi is equal to 0, I have 1, when delta phi is equal to uh, pi, I will have a 0 and when delta phi is equal to 2 pi, I will have a maximum. So, I will get something like this, this is 2 pi, this is pi and it is normalized to 1. So, it depends on the phase difference between the two arms. If the phase difference between the two arms is uh, 0, I will get maximum output and if the phase difference between the two arms is pi, uh, destructive interference happens. Where does the destructive interference happen? At the combining port, wherever the two uh, beams are combining at that coupler, you will have destructive interference and you will get 0 intensity. And you call a uh, voltage required for a phase shift of pi as V pi. So, I can write this transfer function as this is equal to half 1 plus cos pi V by V pi. Because if I apply a voltage of V is equal to V pi, I will get a phase shift of pi, delta phi is pi. Okay. Here when I say voltage applied, am I asking, am I talking about voltage applied in top arm or voltage applied in bottom arm? I am just applying voltage in one of the arms right now, top arm or bottom arm. Now what about the field transfer function E out by E in, ignoring this E power J phi C m, this is going to be cos delta phi by 2 which is cos pi v by 2 v pi. So, I could have plotted this in terms of delta phi or I could have plotted in terms of v. If I were to plot in terms of v, this is going to be my v pi, this is going to be my 2 v pi. But uh, if I were to now plot the field transfer function in the same set of axes, it is cos pi v by 2 v pi which means when v is equal to 0, you get again 1, but when v is equal to uh, v pi, you get cos pi by 2, which means the field goes to 0 and v is equal to 2 pi. So, the field transfer function is going to look like this. This is the field transformation cos pi v by 2 v pi. So, you have a positive phase here and then you have a negative phase here, but mod square of that is still power. So, you get positive power, power never goes negative. Field going negative, so this blue is V out E out by E in, field going negative means that there is a phase shift of pi. This corresponds to a phase difference of pi between the two arms and V pi is a voltage corresponding to that. So, the this is the one shown in blue is the power and this is your field. Now, how do I get modulated output? I will now, I want to convert electrical input to optical output. So, I have on off key data, I bias my electrical input at the right point. What does it mean? I say that this is my electrical input. I adjust the 0 of or, or the, uh, the bias point of my electrical input to be this value, which is let us say V pi by 2. I will make my zeros and 1s swing between this V pi by 2. So, in my on off key data, this is my input let us say, usually you get it as 0 volt and let us say 5 volt. Instead of doing it as 0 volt and 5 volt, what you do is, uh, you shift the bias such that it is now swimming, swinging between uh, let us say V pi is for instance for example, I am taking 5 volt. I will now shift my uh, electrical waveform such that the 0 is appearing at 
2.5 volt and it will swing 2.5 above and 2.5 below. This is my electrical swing. Corresponding to that, I will get what is what, what will be my output uh, uh, result. Whenever the voltage became high, your output is going to be 0 and whenever the voltage became 0, the output is going to be high. So, you got an inverted output in this case, which is not a problem as far as digital communication is concerned because you just say your notion, change your notion of 0 and 1. Suppose you were to get a non-inverted output, what should you do? I will have to just bias at this point, but you do not prefer to do that because I will require a higher, I will be using up a larger voltage or I will be drawing more power, right. So, this is how you would uh, use a modulator to actually get the transfer function uh, converted in from opti electrical domain to optical domain.